You guys are on it. AP's like right on it. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hello, Derp. Hi. You're not important on this panel, I'm sorry. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, as you guys just yelled, I am Final Draft. I am the network director and general host of Everfree Network. Over here, I've got Shinmiro. Yes, I am the wonderful public relations person for Everfree Network. So, person. Yes, says, person. I like how you're like, person. <laughs> like, as in, that's in question. We well, all know he's not politically correct. <laughs> no, no, Kinero here is, um, he's the head of KPNY, if anybody's a fan of that. Um, we also have some of the other KPNY types here, but he's, yeah, he's a PR guy, and I think we came up with a technical term for you, which was, um, what was it, project specialist? Yeah, I find things to work just out of nowhere. He secretly breaks things so that he, like, swoops in to fix it. He does a lot of work. Over here we've got Casey. You're not on. They turned on Unikitty's mic, but not yours. You <laughs> 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 try it again. Try it again. Is he on? Hello. There we go. Hey. Hi. Hey, there's Nash. Oh, there's Nash. Hey, excuse me. Do you have a moment to talk about book horse? Uh, have you accepted Book Horse as your personal princess and best horse? You listen here, Nash. I, I think, like, <laughs> once I, I know you're time. doing a thing, but I thought we could have this as the Book Horse panel. So. All right, look. I, I have some cards we can pass out. We, we, yeah. This has gone far enough. We, we can talk about, you know, why Book Horse is best this horse. This has gone far enough, okay? No. A it's, year and it's a half. It's never far enough. The good word of Book Horse shall spread to the four corners of the earth. <laughs> All shall know her glory. <laughs> so this is Nash. <laughs> Nash is our site coder. He's also the guy, if you guys are a fan of Everfree Radio, the little music widget, he's the guy who coded that. So he's the one who developed our request system, our rating system. Also, when we do the top 100 every year, at the end of the year, he's the one who does the code for that. Um, he's also a misguided book horse fan who seems, to, who seems to think that Princess Twilight is better than Princess Why Luna. Wait, I'm sorry, Princess Luna is clearly superior. Define, define misguided. No, Princess Unikitty is superior. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Casey, or Casey Fish, <laughs> and what do you do, Casey? I work for the news site, and I interview people. I used to be on a show. Died. Yeah. Well, she she used to be on uh, Brony Clubhouse, and she did a segment called uh, what was it? Brony. It wasn't Brony. My Little Pony History with Casey. Little known fact: she has one of the biggest, most complete, and just ridiculously awesome My Little Pony toys and merch collections anywhere. And she's got the most obscure crap you've never heard of, like the rare minty doll from Greece in 1986 or something. She has it. 83. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're working on, on uh, getting your, your My Little Bunny History segment up and running again. Yeah, I need to not be going to conventions so I can actually film. Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to be helping you with that at some point. All right, and so all the way at the end of the table there is Ramble. This, this is your first one of these panels, isn't it? It is, and And your mic's not on. Just steal Casey's. Better? There you go. That's better. Yeah. Ramble is our, I guess, lead audio editor is the best way to put it. But he does, he does the comic reviews. Does anybody here watch uh, the comic reviews we put out? No. No. <laughs> so basically, back. No, we never would. You random guy back there, we love you. Uh, no, he, he does those. And he also uh, this past season headed up our episode reviews. And whenever we have a big interview, I usually call him, and he usually, you know over the phone sends you know negative energy my way for, for putting them to work again. The last minute, yeah. Yeah. Well sometimes it's worth it. Well last week what was it? At work I get a call from Draft who never calls me ever and all of a sudden it's like we need you this afternoon for an interview. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Yeah, no, I know I gen we generally uh, operate on Skype or Mumble or you know other programs. But did you call your mother? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess for this panel uh, you know, just really quick, I'd like to go over you know, who, we, you know, who we are, where we came from. Uh, we're Everfree.net. Uh, we started off as Everfree Radio. 
which I see it in every free radio shirt there. <laughs> um, and then another, another one back there, but the more modern version. Yeah, that's the or version. The, uh, yeah. Or the EFN Mark II, as we like to call it. What I like is that the, the, the poison joke flower that's on that one, Tabitha St. Germain tells me she thinks it looks like a praying mantis. <laughs> um, it was okay. two praying mantises. Yeah, two praying mantises. Um, yeah, we started in, uh, I guess, September of 2011, uh, right as season two is about to start. And we decided we wanted to put together a podcast. And so we... Uh, you know, we had been listening to some of the other podcasts, and this is the early days of the fans. So there weren't really, weren't really as many, um, you know, as many programs out there. So we we started uh, doing episodes that were about an hour and a half each, which is an age, <laughs> a lot of time. But we would put out these episodes. I hosted it. Nasha, uh, you know, worked with the website. Um, Eight Track did some editing. And in the early days, we just would do a music review, we would do a segment that might be a video game thing, we might do a segment that was an interview. We did a few interviews, and what we found was that people liked to skip to the different segments. So then we started doing the different segments separately, and then in January of 2012, on a whim, most of us decided to go to the BronyCon in New York. Was anybody else there? I know Alhad was. Yeah, you two were there. Um, One over here. Oh yeah, there you go. Here's Sashi over there, was there too. Um, and while we were there, uh, our tech director, A-Track, looks over at me and he goes, you know, we have all the equipment to stream this convention. I said, do we want to? Eh, why not? So, so little did we know <laughs> what kind of work that was going to set us on. Um, but yeah, we streamed the first BronyCon just because we could. And then after that, we just started streaming other conventions when we could. And, in uh, spring of 2012, we started working with some other programs like Equestrian Choir. We had Brony Breakdown for a while. Uh, Dusty show, Stay Brony, my friends. Um, we just started working with other shows. Lunar Republic Takeover. Now they're they were blue screen bronies, now they're button mashers. I wonder why they changed their name. Who knows? KPNY, of course. Um, and then one of our more recent ones is Pony Finder, which those two are a part of. And uh, uh, Elements of Harmony. I think some yeah. of them are in here. One of them might know. They may or may not be here. They're, they're all musicians, so they're everywhere. And then QDR Crusaders are also here somewhere. They're, there's a big contingent of them. But yeah, so we started working with different shows. And this guy goes, you know, Draft, I think we need to change the name of the website. It should Not be just the name, like the whole website. <laughs> yeah. It was originally like a blog roll, and uh, everfreeradio.com, I don't know, how many of you ever saw that? I mean, it's, this is like ages ago. Okay, so it was like a blog roll, if you remember that. And, uh, yeah, it show five posts, and then everything else would just fall behind, and nobody knew about stuff we'd done before. It's like, yeah, this isn't working. We have too much content for this. I, it worked when we had just the podcast, right? Because then you have five things for like five most recent episodes. But so if we had too much, like nope, just restructuring everything. So when you had to rebuild the website, pretty much you were what you were being told is it needed to look edgier. Yeah, it needed to pop more. <laughs> yeah, that's just input on it. And I just ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we put it together, and he said, "Well, we have to change the name. We have to go from EFR to EFN." And I was reluctant, but that's when we switched over. And now it's actually been longer that we've been EFN than we were EFR. So yeah, that's kind of our background. Um, we did a lot of interviews early on with the different voice actors. We still do interviews with uh, with different show staff as we can, which was actually something I was surprised nobody else had done before. Like some people had done a few odd ones, but uh, you know, it wasn't a regular thing. It wasn't a regular thing exactly. What's your favorite pastry? Oh God, <laughs> yeah. The first interview, I don't know, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, the first interview that the fan really put out was with Nicole Oliver, and it wasn't us. But the first question they asked Nicole on the, on the recording was, you know, if you could be any kind of tree, what kind of tree would you be? And I was listening to this, and I think, I, yeah, we all like, were listening at the same time. And I was just going, and Nicole, who's awesome, said, well, I think I'd be a lilac because it's pretty. Which is a great response for a really weird question. Well, they, you hear them on the, on the recording and they go, oh, and you just hear typing. <laughs> and that's when I decided, I'm like, we can do this better. Like, we, we can do this better. Come on. So anyway. Um, yeah, that's kind of what we've been so doing anyway. So anyway. You know, this is where I would have busted out an air horn for this, but I, I was told I couldn't bring one. <laughs> we have a history with EFN panels. Um, at BabsCon, which I know several of you were at, uh, we had a ridiculous panel where they pulled a, uh, an Easy Bake oven out. You didn't know what you were doing. It's awful. <laughs> and wonderful at the same time. It was beautiful. It I had no way to react to it. 
It tasted really good. So, which is a shock from what, what you mostly cook. I, I just cook the nonsense. Oh yeah, so I guess the other things we can talk about really quick before we you know, go into other stuff. High, high lars. <laughs> um, is, yeah, we've been working on some other projects, uh, you know, in the background. It, a lot of people, like, I'd say about every month we get about four or five show proposals. Most of the time they're Ken I DJ on EFR. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. We have a few other shows that are in development right now that I want to give a quick shout out to. Um, we've got uh, Radio is Magic, which is hosted by DJ. Oh, okay, there we go. There are the Cutie Art Crusaders. Yeah, they're over there. That looks like a rainbow plasma. Hi. Yeah, come up here. Come up here for a little bit. Smile, smile into the camera. I'm, I'm such a huge fan of Final Draft. I've always, I've always wanted to meet you. You're fired! <laughs> You guys a fan of Cutie Air Crusaders? Yes. Two of them, Plasma. Tell me more about your film. <laughs> <laughs> I feel safest right now. Never <laughs> show. <laughs> Don't mind us. That's the fun part about with EFN. A lot of people, you know, our website is designed. It's you know, and we're we're working on this too. The way that people see us often is that we're just like a few people off in the distance who work with a, you know, a very disconnected website, you know, like, like a, I don't know, not sterile, but like, a, like impersonal website, which we're working Your on. Your face is sterile. Thank you. <laughs> but the point is, is that we've got something like 45 different people who work with various assets of uh, Everfree Network. I mean, the different shows, each of the shows are independently produced. Like, I think these guys would got me. Okay, thank you for, for filming. Yeah, we're going to catch you for panel. Right now. You're, you're we actually have you another panelist talking? that's going to join us here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we are. Yeah. He's joining you guys. Oh, uh, well, you'll see. You will see. You'll see. You'll see. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got graphic designers that work with us. Of course, Nash does coding. We've got audio editors. Um, on any given show, we'll have, you know, say two or three reviewers. Um, and of course, yeah, each of the different shows are independently produced. So each of them need their own editing team, their own, you know, their own designers. I mean, it's kind of the way we run things is that we don't control the individual shows that are on the site, we just basically say, yeah, we can, because there's too many. Like, there's too many of them. Like, the core staff is kind of small, so, you know, so yeah. the shows kind of have to do their own thing a lot anyway, so. But it's been kind of fun. I mean, our, our general attitude was that by putting different podcasts and different shows on one website, that people could discover more and, you know, and you would get a, more of a crossover between the different, you know, fans and say, Dusty's show and fans of, um, I don't know, and these guys. You got like two or three fans, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we counting my mom? Or? <laughs> she, she counts as three. <laughs> <laughs> You know, draft as uh, public relations of this network. I'll allow that. One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. Know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be a PR person for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like oh. to run my mouth off. Um, yeah. So what we usually do when people, per, you know, submit a show is they'll they'll send an idea. I get some that are just one sentence. Some of them aren't even complete sentences. Hi, can I show? <laughs> and I just re reply like. Yeah, like why he I wouldn't even finish it. <laughs> um, no, I mean, but we get some really cool shows too. Um, like I said, I'm working with Radio is Magic. Uh, they premiered it at MLP MSP. Um, it's going to be like a talk show, but it's animated. So it's like animated OCs doing a, like a goofy talk show, game show sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Well, yeah, Funny Fighter Adventures finally got going. They would have gutted me on the stage if they hadn't been airing yet. They were really anxious. Like, how many, you guys have like something like 30 or 40 episodes already recorded, right? Like, it's way up there. Yeah, it's like half a year. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, then there's, you know, like I said before, KPMY. Um, well, and you had an announcement about KPMY. Yeah, I actually do, because I actually do get to make a show every so often, but it drives me crazy. Um, I'm actually going to make an announcement regarding KPNY. We're actually going to release our fifth season this next weekend, finally. So after being in production hell for over half of a year. Uh, but there is one smaller sad announcement that this season will only be followed by one more, and that is it. So unfortunately, it does, it, as all good stories, they will reach its end, but we are working on something else, which I am going to be proud to announce. How many of you have actually followed the podcast Welcome to Night Vale? All right. How many of you heard about what happened at DashCon with them? Oh, yeah. 
I've seen four people at this convention cosplayed as ball pits. <laughs> I saw a Deadpool cosplayed as Deadpool with a ball pit. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so yeah, we're, I'm actually going to be announcing that uh, we are going to be making a parody of Welcome to Night Vale. So if those of you who have followed that, uh, keep, you know, stay, stay tuned for details in the next coming months. That is going to be a new project that I'm going to be stealing half of the KPNY team for. I guess in terms of other stuff, I mean, we... I can't, I can't say what it was, but he uh, was it Ramble, I was going to say Robert, but Ramble uh, uh, kind of alluded to this. Two weeks ago, I was this close to having a massive interview go through, which is going to happen eventually. We've got a big interview on the, the horizon. It just You won't amazing. expect it. Yeah, you won't expect it. It's, it but it's... Uh, <laughs> What's that? It, it's, it, it was really big, but, you know, um, we've got some interviews lined up. We also uh, are... The, the bigger thing that we've been kind of working on in the background, and, uh, and I don't have too much to say about today, but over the coming months, stay tuned, is we're going to be expanding a project that a few of us have started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, which, you know, some of you may have noticed this. If you go to the bottom of our website, it says Copyright Poison Joke Productions. It's our company. We decided to become an LLC just for you know, legal whatever reasons. Well, we're going to be expanding what Poison Joke Productions does. So our general plan is to develop a new website and actually go into producing things using the production model that we came up with for you know, doing various shows online. Because the truth is, none of us here live in the same state. You know, Some he lives on a different continent. You know, yeah, the two of them here are from somewhere up north, North Montana. Yeah, so yeah. Not, yeah some of us are lucky to live maybe four hours apart. All I heard was that you were developing some new weapons. Yes. Yeah. It so, involves uh, Conyers. <laughs> no, no um, yeah, so we're going to be developing, I mean, basically, the few, and I'm not going to rant on this too long because they've got some who knows what plan. And we also have to introduce uh, one other uh, guest of honor to our panel here in a second. Yeah, we do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, the future of media is that it's all online. As you guys all know, everybody here knows that, I mean, just as a show of hands, I'm just curious, how many of you watch the my Little Pony primarily on your computer. Exactly. So and much how many of you primarily watch it on television? Yeah. That's a surprising number of people. <laughs> yes. And to top, you know, add on to that, how many of you work on a project in this fandom and don't even live close to half of your teammates? Exactly. 20 years ago, this sort of a fandom couldn't exist, and the reason why is because the internet was too slow. You couldn't put a video online without spending a day and a half without a phone, you know? <laughs> the dial-up tone alone was something you had to suffer through just to get to AOL. What do you know about spending a day and a half on a phone? <laughs> well, get off the line, I need to call Grandma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're, we're being a so we're oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, go say hi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sore right now. I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow. No, yeah. I can avoid you. Oh, okay, guys. Since we're getting rid of these guys, I think I want to bring someone else up on here for a quick minute. Yeah, right there for right now. Yeah, one second. I guess the what I'm getting at is that because the internet has become so much faster, because fandoms like this and audiences basically like this can happen, because everybody can just go online and see what they want to you know watch. I mean, you guys don't watch shows you don't want to watch. You watch what you want to watch, and you watch it on your computer or some people still watch it on TV and they're lucky to have that channel, but the point is that um, that principle can be applied to anything. And so we're hoping to take uh, uh, Poison Joke Productions and start you know, doing stuff that's not just based in My Little Pony, but also anything else out there. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. We're going to be trying to develop a new website and, and yeah, create some new stuff. But I think we should introduce our other panelists. Well, there's going to be a few panelists, but there's one right now. That I want to introduce. Okay. So, who of you uh, are familiar with uh, Kibby the Great? Yeah. As we call him Kibbles, please. <laughs> Nick, so he's, he was actually supposed to be here on this panel with us, but because of a work scheduling snafu, we had to book him a later flight. So, in his honor, since he cannot be here, I thought we would do something for him. We want him here in spirit, really. Yeah, we really he's do want him here. Since, since we couldn't get him here, I thought we would you know, get the next best thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you agree, Kibbles? Keep Reese. Or Kibbles the Greedy in here. Sure not. 
He's naked. <laughs> oh, we're missing a hat. Yeah. Yeah, no, the Kibby hat got lost again at Disneyland or something. Yeah, it fell off on Space Mountain. Yeah, there you go. Um, no, uh, Kibby is, uh, is our graphic designer. He designed our OC. If you guys have seen Starflower, that's our, our OC. He designed that. She's so cute. We like to hold. We like to harass him as much as possible because he's earned it. Kibbles, please. Well, plus I, he lived like what, not even two hours away from me, so yeah. I harass him quite frequently. Yeah, I don't like to bother him as much. He's gonna be here tonight, so so yeah, it's, he's he's pretty sad he couldn't be here for this panel since the work snafu. But if you have any questions, you can actually DM me or him, and he will send me responses to answer them for you. It's true because he's actually flying with Wi-Fi. And he says, at least I'm gonna be there somehow. Oh, he's here, all right. He's here. <laughs> okay, so, so there was there was one show we've been working on for a while, right, Draft? Oh yeah. You know, oh, the, so, yeah. I, I, do you want me to talk about it or you know that one that one show that you made that cheese? Okay, so there's a show. Um, oh no, I know where this is going. Yeah, I think you do know where this is going. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, you wanted to take Poison Joke Productions into a new direction. I think this is where we should start. A year and a half ago, Dusty Cat releases a video, How to Make the Manliest Cheeseburger Possible, which when I read the, t the title, I thought he was going to ground ground up some like human meat or something, like a manliest burger. I, for some reason, my mind went there. Well, anyway, in response, I decided to make the worst mac and cheese I could. And I made a video and I put it on my channel. Like I think classic bachelor cooking, and I played some cheesy uh, yeah, uh, yeah. '70s music. Yeah, background. show tunes. And I put like cheese whiz in there. It was and, foul. Like, all this other crap. Absolutely it, foul. It tasted amazing. No. It no. Was it amazing. Was I think this looked more appetizing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you know it's a convention where people are hungry enough that they look at a bag of kibbles and bits, you know, and, and the. I actually. Well, we always knew Kibby was savory, so. I actually Googled if you can eat dog food. You did? Yes. And can so you? So could, like, open it up and just start eating kibbles. No. Ew. I don't, I, I, I fear the memes. No. <laughs> fear the memes. But anyway, so I did this video, and they've been trying, harassing me to do a follow-up with classic bachelor cooking, and a, I have a plan for it, um, but I've never gotten around to doing it. So. so that's why at conventions we harass them to actually cook on the panel. Yeah, at BabsCon they busted out an easy bake oven, and I made the world's worst, the world's worst brownies. It was like a it, it, it was it's a whoopie pie. Whoopie, whoopie pies. Whoopie pies. It was supposed to be a whoopie pie, but it had no filling. It was just. Well, it was brown. Who names, who names a, a confection of whoopie pie? It's just, <laughs> it's just asking for trouble. Hi there. It was up. I think I know him. <laughs> yeah, I know who this is. You want to say hi? Would you like to say hi? <laughs> Everybody, this is D-Pad from Button Mashers. And apparently he wanted to join us on us. So yeah, I, we, got, we got him up here. He's going to help you cook. Oh, that's grand. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at some point... I actually think a bunch of really decent things in a microwave. <laughs> so, okay. Included? So since, um, since, you know, we always try to make draft cook on the panel. They we, try always to, try to, we always try to take something new that the, uh, the internet has been going on about. So unfortunately, we were going to try to bring a ball pit because of DashCon, but we got told no. Of course. Sad. Sorry. You know, we were thinking pit. about it. But too many people signed up for the extra hour in it. You know? <laughs> so we decided to go with something a little more relevant. Who heard, who heard of that Kickstarter of the guy who made 60 grand for potato salad? What? Ooh, well, I was so proud yeah. you not heard of that. Draft. So, you know, to mark the occasion, I think our first project in for Poison Joke Productions, you know, I think we really should. <laughs> So we've got celery. <laughs> the is gonna throw us out. Yeah. Got, no, as long as we don't feed anybody, it's fine. Actual <laughs> potatoes. You know what we could do is if we started the Kickstarter. Because maybe, just maybe, we could make a fraction of what the potato salad Kickstarter We've got, did. and then make some rancid Cake pans. Well, I got that since we couldn't get a cutting board. An onion. I don't need this to cry. I'll be crying at it. No more tears. No, no more tears. tears. No more tears. <laughs> it's all over now. Tears are behind us now. 
Oh, it's not fake mayonnaise, it's real mayonnaise. Well, hey, look on the bright side, it's not Miracle Whip. Oh. Relish. And that's all the ingredients you need, everything else is to help you cook. I'm gonna relish this moment. I was about to look at I saw that. I saw you say that. Oh my but, God. you know what, I'm kind of thinking, I kind of suspected... Let us forget just... all this ever happened. Okay? Oh. Yeah, let's salary the situation. Um, so I guess what we could do while well, apparently I'm making potato salad. <laughs> so while Draft makes potato salad. Okay, we've got plastic. Thank God. I was like, like they're gonna make me cut this with my hands or something. We thought about that and we said it would be too inhumane. That was just evil. <laughs> Look, we're not that evil here on the get then, okay? Yeah, well, I'm gonna well, try to. Well, at least at the corporate meeting. Yeah. <laughs> moderately evil. <laughs> okay, so I thought that maybe while I'm um, doing this, like the other thing that the other show I was gonna mention that we've been working on is something we call Ever Free Unplugged, which is a basically a Pr pretty show. much what's happening. It's right exactly right. what's happening. Yeah, because the truth is that running the website, you guys see the website as it's finished, and you see our finished product and like our polished interviews or our polished programs or whatever. What you don't see is all of us just giving each other help. And it's hilarious. Which, you know, which the, the greatest thing about all of this is he usually gives us hell every other day. This is our comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. We, we talk all the time, and, and it's, just, it's just endless. Endless puns and your face jokes. Uh, <laughs> it's true. He what has not stopped. To do with this? Make what potato salad. Do? Why? You got Look, this. Some guy made 60 grand off of it. You can make five bucks. Do you know how to make potato salad? Oh, okay. Because this is Tim Starr. This is Tim Starr. This is Tim can uh, cook. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to let you finish. I just want you to know Rachel Ray makes a better potato salad. <laughs> of course she does. <laughs> this is uh, Starlight Iron Hoop from uh, Elements of Harmony. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He also is uh, public relations with, with Bernie Cotton. <laughs> Look, so let's get this Indiegogo money started. Money right. on the table, right here, right now. Single file, single file. So if I, if, I guess if people have questions for us, we're gonna start doing uh, backers. Ten dollars. We'll let you try it. Uh, Fifteen. Not at the convention center, though. Right, right. I'm 15. not helping you this time. Fifteen. We'll make sure the mercury levels are safe. Twenty. We'll feed it to a rat and see what happens. Uh, if we get up to fifty, I think we can try to make it not taste like feet. <laughs> What about a hundred? If you give it a hundred, I will find you a real spoon and feed it to you. <laughs> somebody, one, somebody once asked me how I stay calm on panels, and what I told them is that all my energy is spent dealing with this. Uh, <laughs> By the time I'm at a convention, I've kind of reached a quiet resignation of the... <laughs> What's next? So anyway, so, uh, you know, so what... Okay, draft. First, you open the mayonnaise, stick your fingers in it, and start drawing on that. 50 cents Thumbs up! 550, folks. 550. Do I hear six? <laughs> We're not actually selling potato salad. No, not. This guy had a question. What is your question? There we go. There we go. Now we're all right. Now we're bankrolling. Oh, crap. Oh, that's, that's a visa. And a visa card. That, that, we're done. That's a visa. All right, bidding's closed. You win. We're done. You gave us a second card? Hey, no refunds. Oh, it was bars. Okay. He's got like six. Or so, in the meantime, while well, Ralph learns how to cook, uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, all right, you with the scarf. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yes. It, well, you've heard of Fifty Shades of Grey, right? <laughs> so yeah, think of Fifty Shades of Nay, and then we're good to go. Look, it's a. Do I have to talk to you about standards and practices? Look, I'm just talking about the book. I'm not going into detail. Okay. Ever free network. Well, look, it's a parody of a parody. It can go further. This is the internet. Parody and parodies is kind of like bread and butter. Potatoes and I mean, you do know. <laughs> you can't even you open the mayonnaise. Really? Helpless. Other question. Seriously. How is All right. All right. Uh, question. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we got two goldfish. All right. <laughs> Five seventy-five and two One goldfish. goldfish. Alright, alright, um, question up here, what's up? Six bucks, six bucks, there we go. Is this even dance quarter? Okay, so another show that we're doing. 
Actually, I am actually a, a referee in real life, and I can I can vouch for that. My my registration card is in my wallet, but it's in my room. Let me just ask you this, okay? Your name is Red Card. Why didn't you throw a red card in this situation? This is clearly offside. This is clear. Oh, he actually has red cards. Come on, what are you blind? <laughs> Ref, get your eyes checked. Oh my goodness. Throw me out of the game. I'll out show you what. You're out of here. Okay. Hey Dad, you're off the field. You, can't you just make. don't know how to cut a potato trap. It took you ten minutes. <laughs> That's more effort than you've given into this so far. Grand procedure. Okay, she's got a question. Well, let me just get my matches then. Tonight, you. What's that? Oh, tonight. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. We can't bring anything to fire. This is a baked idea on this part. Not baked at all. <laughs> okay, so did somebody else? I thought there was. Okay, yes. With who? Sarah Wall? You know, she, okay, at one point I was looking into it, and I think, and I'm maybe, don't quote me on this, but I think at the time she was actually pregnant, she was going to have kids. So at, when I first looked into doing that, she was dealing with a newborn baby, and that kind of is, you know, that takes up time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not against the idea. Uh, it, it, and I think we really would like to go back and interview some more of the, uh, of the production staff, because truth is that, like, you know, everybody knows the voice actors by this point, but, uh... What are you doing? <laughs> well, the Buzz Knuckles meeting. <sighs> yeah, we have to go about how we're going to raise the price for worse names. Well, you need to give them their dividends. Anyway. Okay, well, so, so yeah, it's, I, I'm not against the idea at all. I, I just, you know, we, there are so many people who work on My Little Pony French with this magic. That was one of the things I learned when I started looking into doing interviews, is that DHX and Dick and Rogers and all the, you know, the people in Vancouver, and then all the people at Hasbro and all that, there are tons of people who work on the show, and you know, I think there are a lot of them that deserve more attention. So yeah, I would like to do that. Um, okay, anybody else have questions? Uh, this guy here. Yeah. Um. Horse News is better at you than cutting potatoes. And, uh, I would like to see Horse News prove that. Well, he's not exactly... In our defense, he's not exactly setting the bar. We haven't... I, I just want to point out that Horse News came here today so they can make potato salad. Um, there you go. If you guys can make a successful you potato salad... You got this? I will... I will yeah. Yeah. Give them their moment. All right. <laughs> you know, they're just going to have to try, I guess. And I want to thank them for showing that up to the panel. I know they're my biggest news. fans. Seriously. <laughs> anyway. Horse News has an entourage. They also have a shrimp. Look at them. It's very badasses. Guys, you forgot the celery. You guys got to the celery. That is a yellow card. This guy should be this guy should be like like scanning like questions for VA panels. You know, if they, if they got a bad question. Lord knows we could use one. Thank you. Please give them the utensils. Don't make them use their hands. I don't know where those hands have been. There's not enough Purell in the world to make that potato salad. Okay. For real. Hey guys, you need relish? I don't know. Don't don't throw the relish. Last thing we need is a concussion or some glass wounds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's close enough. It's art. Well, it's to be really fair, glorious. this is like, this thing looks like, like a rabbit group of rabbits. <laughs> Got at, like, the, the produce department and wrecked. You know, it's a sound of applause. They can at least do this. Yeah. 
But you know, in their defense, they smell of really celery is so strong. make something out of here. themselves. I can give them that much. Yeah, exactly. But they really did fail at the recipe because they didn't really use the they relish. They didn't use the relish. They didn't relish uh, it. Close yeah. enough. Well, we oh. have the, the onion. You got it covered? Oh. Yeah, no, there you go. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Go yeah. for it. Here you go, lunch. Thank you. Thank you. You forgot the onion. Enjoy. Thanks for dinner. I appreciate it. You got it, bud. Enjoy the salad. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to see him again. He's going to die of food poisoning. No. There's nothing. So, wait, medical staff has been notified that Draft did try to make potato salad. Yeah. Okay. That is an expensive salad. It was 1782. Oh, the yeah. ambulance is on its way. Okay. Other people had questions. I saw a couple so other I, hands. I did get one uh, one question from Ohad regarding the starflower plushies. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a thing anytime soon. We'd like it to be. But, Certainly uh, open to the idea. We are open to the idea. That would be totes the dorms. Yes. Okay, I saw a question back there. The grump. I'm just sure. Hey. When are we going to get the twerk on? We need two black. Yeah, good question. Oh, now we're. <laughs> No twerking. All right. Moves. Relax the gyro process. I'm not here to hips. twerk. I'm here to have fun. <laughs> Get back to twerk. Come on, man. No. All right. <laughs> All right. Heat wave. Uh, yes, I have an extremely important question. When do we get pay raises? <laughs> well, <laughs> people are getting paid? Dude, the hell? We have... We have we we don't get paid. What? Now, this is, a, this is a question that's been asked before. Um, EFN is all... Volunteer. We all volunteer. Um, wait, 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 nonprofit, wait, less than profit. Um, no, we don't get dental, unfortunately. Well, no wonder. Yeah. Uh, the benefits are uh, internet nonsense, uh, <laughs> occasional tweeting. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I, what I tell people, like, when, when he's asked this before too, you know, I'll give you a fifteen percent raise on, on your current rate. Hooray! I make that? one cent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, better than nothing. <laughs> other questions? Yes. Uh, how did this whole thing get started? And how did you come up with the name Evergreen Network? Well, it started, like I said, um, like the group of us actually, true story, we actually started on EQD's IRC way, way back in the day. I went by Sesco, C E S C O, which was a lazy screen name I took from an antique pair of safety glasses. But anyway, um, and I would just hang out in the EQD IRC. He, he would hang out there too. <laughs> you honest to God can't hear her unless she's like completely engulfing the microphone. This panel's like a zen riddle. You can't make any sense of it. That's the brilliance of it. I mean... What we just had 14, but 20 members of Horse News take the produce off our stage and make potato salad. What? <laughs> How is the salad, by the way? Is All it right, good? Two thumbs up. You forgot the onion. Up. You want the onion? No, I think the onion is the only thing that's keeping him from dying. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. Give me the onion. How are you still alive? I'm bad pony. <laughs> um, Just remember to take it out of the plastic. We may have found somebody immune to draft cookies. So that is a good point. We got the Everfree, and it actually it's, it's almost become ironic. We got the name Everfree because we were Everfree Radio, because when we got the name, it was before Everfree Northwest existed. They stole our idea. Um, but we were supposed to be the unusual podcast, because at the time, there were only a couple of podcasts out there. It was Bronyville, and I think, like, two others? I don't even remember. Yeah, but, there was and, and then there was, like, the EQD crew. I mean, there was only a few websites at the time. There was DHN, I think, back then, and, and a couple others, Roundstable. So it kind of felt like there was an old boys club at play because we started a year after the fandom started. I mean, we started in 2011, so we wanted to be the outside perspective that did things differently. So we were ever free radio and we became a free network. Yeah, that's where it came from. Um, all right, other questions or shenanigans? Shenanigans. Tim. So are you allowed to use like poison joke in the name? I asked actually. Um, so we, we registered the name. I believe a day after I asked Amy King Rogers, because she was the one who wrote Bridal Gossip, and she coined the term, I asked her if we could use it as the name of our company. She goes, oh yeah, totally. So we got her permission. And Hasbro hasn't yelled at us yet, and I know they've seen it, so. 
Um, yes. Um, uh, remember at, at Evergreen Northwest uh, 2012, the voice acting center, when, when, when you and some of the voice actors were going back and forth with Russian accents? That would be Kathy Westlock, whose who's family's from Belarus, um, or at least she has relatives there, and she does a better Russian accent than I do. Yeah. My, my dad's from Russia, so I grew up with it. In Soviet Russia, Moosh looks at you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't worry about such things. Um, when it makes the poo, it's summer weather. <laughs> summer weather. Uh, This guy is like living the life over here. Look at this. He's, he's, so happy. he's got the celery, he's like, yeah. He's so happy right now with that rancid relish celery. That, how many slices of potato? Like three total? Uh, one, two, three, four, it's like four. Okay, awesome. Yeah, quarters, even better. Well, at least you'll be glad that you won't be getting conflict because you are eating all your vegetables. And exactly. It's good Just to have sure fiber sure. in your diet. That is an epic mustache, by the way. I'm going to give you credit on that. Awesome. I wish I could do that. I can't. Does that mean I get to ask my question? You do. Yes. Yes. Okay. You've been trying to give a microphone to that little thing. Yes. I am waiting for it to say something. Yes. Yeah. Business, business, business. <laughs> Numbers. Is this working? Yes. <laughs> she can actually do a pretty good impression. You should, you should. What would you and Kitty say to say hi to everybody? Is everyone staying positive? No. No. <laughs> No, we don't like hearing no. Well, you just said no. <laughs> About that. <laughs> okay. So we just, we want to let everyone know, you know, it's been awesome to have this panel. We still have a couple minutes left if you guys want to just, I don't know, ask us questions or just whatever you guys It's nice to have a panel that's not at like 9 in the morning on a Sunday. You know, in the sub basement behind the, the, you're, the fighting off the you're fighting off the boiler, trying not to get scalded. Yeah, they're like, you can have a panel, but here's a can of bug spray. Can you just take care of the cockroaches? You know? Yeah, there's a spider about the size of your head in there. Just, just if you hear hissing, run. <laughs> yeah, there's that one too. That's later. That's the problem. Yeah, we're, we're right under jump con. We're just watching the support beams just start to. They moved the concert this year, so they can jump. I think. Right. Yeah. yeah that's that's good. good. Yeah. It's good. You need to play the theme song. Which what? One? Play the theme song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's that? Play it right now. Yes, Mr. Hardcover. Can you read my fanfic? <laughs> you know what? You know what? Listen. Okay. I've heard this before. Let's, you know, let's just knock one out. Let's just read it right now. Let's just get this you know what? so nobody ever has to ask somebody, you somebody once actually contacted us on the IRC, or contacted me, and said, and I, and I always love it when it starts this way, Mr. Final Draft, which to me seems like an oxymoron, but you're like being formal and using street. <laughs> Mr. Final Draft, sir, would you, pray tell, allow me, perchance, to write or inscribe a tale of flightful fancy about your original characters. Uh, yeah, he, this guy wrote an, a fanfic about so the So, uh, Iserium Webster Thesaurus from 1921? Uh, yeah, pretty. Well, anyway, they, they did a, uh, a fanfic about all of our OCs and how Everfree Radio started. It was weird to read, because they, you know, it was like, I don't think it worked exactly like that. I don't think that I was talking to Applejack there. <laughs> but, but, you know, at least I can say that somebody just up and decided to do a fanfic about us, you know, I was like, okay. Um, I mean, it's definitely better than some of the ones I've heard about myself. And that was something, too, that, like, when we first started developing EFN as a, like, a, a like, comprehensive website, when we started working with news, that's something new this past year. Um, and, you know, when we started posting PMVs and all that, people always ask us, well, where are you posting the fanfics? There's no way to do it. There's too much. Like, and there's just too much. And, you know, fan fiction's kind of got that covered either way. But, you know, yeah, it's just crazy. And then where do you draw the line between? Because some of the stuff that's out there, it's kind of died down a little bit since 2011. We don't see as much of the absolute insane fanfic stuff, but. And just you probably don't see it because you're not looking for it. I'm really not. <laughs> and, and even then, even if it was something we wanted to do, it just takes a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people. To do the news site, and I don't know, is Jose still here? No. He, he was, was working not. with it for a while. A while um, and then Casey, of course, is working with it. To do the news site takes a very big crew of people. And, and you know, posting an article isn't just, oh, news has occurred. You know, there it is on the site. 
it, it takes editing, it takes research. You know, one of the things we really pride ourselves on is making sure things are sourced. You know, when we post artwork, we want to make sure that the artwork, A, the artist doesn't, you know, have a problem if we repost it, but B, that it has, you know, its appropriate sources and contacts in there. And that takes a lot of time. Yeah. It's a lot of research. Yeah, it and I actually research. should give a huge shout out, by the way, to Araxinus, who's at home somewhere. I think he's out in Vegas. But yeah, he's, 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 out. he's the guy who's been posting all of our music. We've got you know, our radio station. If you guys know it, it's got ridiculously, I think we're up to pushing probably 7,000 tracks. No, it's uh, 9,000. Is it 9,000 now? Oh, oh we can finally use that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's over 9,000. It's, it's over 9,000. That's over 9,000 independent brony tracks and show songs and I mean if you think there may be say let's say there are 20 yeah. songs total from what the show. It? You started out with what was it 700 or uh, 700 to 1000 yeah, when I started and then uh, we were about 5000 when Raxus started. And every year by the way at the end of the year when we do the top 100 everybody like there's no avoiding you know the complaints because everybody's like that's not fair it's like no it's based on votes and and math, but every year just just yeah, I, I, I posted like exactly how it was calculated last year, and you know the complaint is just based stop. on voting and math, and there is no perfect way to say, like, oh, these are the top 100, these are the best. That's not you can't decide that. The or you can say like either like you have a few people who are like the arbiters of good taste and say this is good, or you just leave it to like you know voting. And we have a bunch of voting, we have data. It doesn't matter how do you want to use it and what call it calculation. So I like I posted how I did it, and it's just that's how it's determined. And yeah, it is popular vote, so it's sort of like a popularity contest. But you know you can't objectively say what's good or bad, so you have to pick a match. It's impossible. And the curse of the top 100 um, is that you know when we're watching it, we watch the IRC for the first 50. Um, of the top 100, everybody says, oh, this should have been higher. For the next 50, everybody says, how did this get that high? You know, <laughs> there's just no winning. Um, but anyway, uh, but when we always, yeah, we always check the statistics for everything before we, you know, we always filter out, you know, for every year. Discord to Living Tombstone Remix is by far. <laughs> like, if, if it was all over the course of everything, that song would win every contest. It's hilarious. Play Discord. Yeah, and Tombstone. <laughs> we, we torment Tombstone whenever I talk to him. Like, oh, hey, man. man, Discord's pretty cool. All right, your question. I was just wondering how you actually go about nominating. Well, we don't. What we do is we put the songs on our stream and then, or on our radio station, and if people can request it, they can also vote it up. And if they're signed in on the site, which you can, you know, you can sign in, you can favorite it. And so we take those numbers into account, and then we just left the map. Well, strictly right. speaking, it's only based. Like I looked at it and requests and favorites. It doesn't really. I for like favorites. It's a good system, but it, like it's not very used. It doesn't yeah. provide a lot of data. And requests. I mean, if you look at a request, it's also like stuff that re gets requested a lot also gets voted on a lot. So like the main factor is the voting. And yeah, I have like a system for how I use that. It's not straight up. You know. Um, what has the highest rating because that would favor tracks that have been in the long, like longer in the system. Yeah. So I did like, I did like linear regression to see how the uh, voting, like advances over time, what the curve is, and then I adjusted for that, and I took in like the ratio between uh, upvotes and total votes, just gives you like, okay, maybe it hasn't played that much and hasn't been voted on that much, but when it played, everyone liked it, if it has like 100% upvotes and stuff like that. So I used those two factors. I mean, if you think about it, weighted. if you think about it, like if you did it just, let's say, because at the end of this year, we'll do the top 100 of 2014. Well, a track that was released in January has had way more time to get requested and voted up than a track that might have been released at the beginning of December of the year, you know? So it, it's hard to balance everything, though. We try to it's almost a linear curve for how it uh, goes up over time. It drops off a little bit over time, so I adjusted for that. And so it, it just like it gives all the tracks like equal you know, consideration, like how how long they've been in the system and how many votes they have, instead of just like you know the total ra rating. I mean, I'll say, too, I'll say too, like, I mean, each of us on EFN, and there are a lot of us, um, have our own personal favorite tracks. You know, I, one of my favorite artists in the fandom is JB, and I really wish he was here. It's uh, Germany this weekend, but uh, he's from Germany. Anyway, he does amazing trans remixes. He would be in my top 10 every year, but he didn't even make the top 100 last year, which was, in my opinion, a travesty. That being said, it's Your not face is a travesty. That being said, Dragon Greed. Dragon Greed was awesome, but that was a 
wow, that was a while ago. That was a long time. Holy time. nostalgia. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, I think that one's still blooping on the video. Yeah, it does. Brony Trance that hasn't been changed yeah. since Switch BronyCon? We don't worry about such things. Yeah, that's what I thought. No. Yeah, we don't worry. So, yeah, I mean, it's not about personal preferences. But anyway, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions, and then we got to book it so that they can empty the room or something. And we Five minutes? Okay. 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 Uh, does anybody else have any questions or, you know, want to... Yes. How, how did you get the shell flavor for uh, I thought that was pretty impressive. Oh. Well, we were the first website to contact her to interview her. Um, and uh, she, yeah, she she was starting to work on an album at the time, which is Timeless Songs of the, Se the Century. It's been out now for a year. Um, and so she wanted a way to play her songs for the Bronies. And I said, well, why don't we just do it as like a, like a live stream event? And then she was releasing songs one at a time. So it started, you know, we had it like on Saturdays because that was the best day for it. Um, and it would be about once a week, and then it turned into basically a show. Um, so it started off as a promotional for her album, but then it expanded, and of course she's since done a Christmas album, and she's working on another one now, and she's been working with a lot of people too on other things. Okay, I saw your hand first. We have a what now? It's a Hall of the Moon. And also, the princess oh, is right the best princess in Nash. This is yeah. the reason right here. Nightmare Moon's return and everything. Yeah, uh, it's that, too. <laughs> okay, you got a question. Where are you all from? Well, I'm actually from Palm Springs, California. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm from Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm from Fairfield County, Connecticut. Orange County, California. Alberta, Canada. And we've got people on our team that worked with us. Uh, Sterling is from Brisbane, Australia. Yeah. Um, let's see who else we have. Tim's from uh, Kentucky. Tim's from Kentucky. Um, yeah, yeah, we've got Midley's from Ottawa. One Crescendo's trick from, is Crescendo's from <laughs> Manchester. Um, was it? One trick is from. Uh, they're back for more potato salad. Uh, one trick. One trick is from Arkansas. Uh, let's see. I mean. Yeah, Somebody's eight tracks Texas. is from Texas. Yeah, he's from Houston. Um, Dave, South Dakota. Yeah, that's true. Rax is from everywhere. Rax is from Vegas. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. And with few exceptions, except for California, which is like it's California. So there you go. All of you. Um, <laughs> most of us don't live any close. Like, like Cowboy Dave, I got to give a huge shout out. By the way, he couldn't make it. And he really wanted to. So he wanted me to tell everybody to say hi. Yeah, Dave, but can't forget Dave. Um, who's also, he just does amazing amounts of work for EFN. He's out of Rapid City, South Dakota. He's actually a cowboy. He's not here right now because he's literally wrangling calves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now. Yeah, that's the only reason he couldn't be here. He's actually dealing with cattle. He is a real cowboy. So, and then we actually have um, Index, who's from uh, Texas now. Yeah, he was in uh, Tennessee. Was Tennessee, Tennessee, and he yeah. moved to Texas. And then we got Calligraphy, who's out in Connecticut. She's gonna be moving to Colorado. It goes uh, on. Yeah, you know, also Kibby's like also from Southern California as well. Kibbles, please. Yeah, we most of my own crew from KPNY is also from Southern California. We have. It's all. Also, you even have people from Australia too, from New York City. Yeah, you know, a Pinky Brony who's now like Astro Moves or something, but it's Pinky Brony. Yeah, Joel, whatever. You want yeah, to yeah, he's from. Uh, I think he's from Sydney. Is he Sydney or Brisbane? I don't remember. I don't. One remember. or the other. One of them. A lot of people yeah. all over the place. Crazy. Actually, how many people drive here than me? I don't know. A few people did, though. Somebody out of Iowa did. Um, all right. Last question, anybody? Yes. When contacting each other, which do you guys prefer, Skype or Google? Uh, we actually don't use either, mostly. We use Mumble, if you've heard of that. Skype was where we started off way back in the day, but Mumble is nice because it's just you just log on and it uses low bandwidth and you can record through it multi-track, which is an amazing aid. If you ever want to record a podcast and it's not video-based like theirs, you should record it multi-track because it's amazing and you can remove coughs and whatnot, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, we actually usually use a mobile server or we'll be in the IRC or we'll just individually Skype message each other. Or in some because occasions, wake each other up at three in the morning. Is Lars still in the room? Lars works with us too, I should, I should mention that. Uh, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. Yeah, he goes to Hawaii often. Let's also forget the best thing about Mumble, which is when you come in and draft people, you can just drag it to whatever. Oh yeah, we have little, the, there are little side rooms in, in the Mumble server, so like we, we've got a staff room, I'm like, okay. We are often drafters. Yes, draft. it happens. All right, last question. All right, I guess that's. Uh, I, I think I think that's okay. He's good. Why do you continue to refuse the greatness that is Blue Force? 
Okay. <laughs> Excellent question. I think, this, I think this is an important note to end on. Once upon a time, in the magical land of the internet, I thought that Twilight Sparkle was the best princess. I did. Well, she wasn't princess at the time. I thought she was best uh, pony. Back then, they were called ponies. <laughs> uh, this was a long time ago. Choose your next words carefully. This was a long time ago. We had regular horses. And, and, e and even, when I was, even when I was at uh, BronyCon 2012 in January, I even said in front of everyone that Twilight Sparkle was best pony. But then a certain episode weaseled its way into my subconscious, and I, and I caught myself at BronyCon uh, June 2012, going through the aisles, and I, I looked at my bag of swag, and it was all Luna stuff. It was subconscious. I had got all this Luna stuff. I'm like, wait a second, I like Luna more. I have, I have to accept this. And, and I, think, I think Nash, he's still angry at me. He calls me an apostate. <laughs> He calls me a heretic. So if he happens to come up, come back next year, I'm actually going to get a nice flowing robe for Nash commissioned. Just the whole thing, make him like the... the, the I, I, yeah, I, I, have, say that. I have a lot of respect for Book Horse. I do. She's number two. <laughs> A side note, I think the only reason that I got the art side job that I did is because I posted two or three consecutive pictures of Luna. He just fell for it. Yeah, and also we want to give a big shout out to D-Pad right here. Yeah. He actually manages yeah. a lot of the art site for us. Yeah. So all the nice art that you see posted on EFN, this is a man. Oh, posted. yellow card. <laughs> Strangling earns a yellow, yellow, yellow card. card. Potato Man. salad earns a red. Nash, do you have a few? Sorry, that's well, a penalty. Potato point. salad can kill you. Strangling is not a guarantee. Potato, that potato, potato salad, salad will kill you. you. Um, <laughs> of course, the thing I always say that gets everybody way more upset is uh, my, my, my nickname for Fluttershy. <laughs> which is. <laughs> Number six. Oh! <laughs> I harass everyone. I also do that to, what was it, to Jay Haller, who's obsessed with. Jack. I'm like, okay, I get the Applejack is Applejack your favorite is background movie. Shut up, <laughs> This is unacceptable. Okay. I think you were neglecting the Pink Horse Master Race. Oh, oh you mean Cadence? Hey, Yellow card. Oh. Oh. Okay, I think we're running out of time, guys. Um, I want to thank everybody for showing up. Um, you know, keep tuning in. We've got more stuff always coming along. Thanks.